On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Mayor, I mean Secretary Pete, goes to L.A. and Long Beach, and all is not well. Hi, I'm Sal McCagliano, your host of What's Going On With Shipping. I'm the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner, and an instructor in maritime industry policy, maritime security, and maritime history. So yesterday, Secretary Pete Buttigieg visited the ports of L.A. and Long Beach. First time the sitting Secretary of Transportation has gone out to the seat of the issue. And there are two stories that I really want to focus in on that came out that highlight concerns and issues still with the port that does not seem to be resonating beyond or into this administration. So this is the first story from G-Captain. Uh, this is Mike Scholler writing this story. DOT Secretary Buttigieg touts infrastructure funding during, second, uh, during Southern California port visit. Uh, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg on Tuesday made his first visit to the ports of LA and Long Beach to tour the nation's largest port complex, which combined are responsible for about 40% of the country's imported goods. Tuesday's visit included a boat tour followed by a press conference at the Port of Long Beach Joint Command and Control Center. Now, Mike goes on here to talk about the fact that the USC ports are going to receive infrastructure from the uh, infrastructure bill, $17 billion, has been allocated for ports and waterways in the bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. This visit also comes on the heels of the Maritime Administration awarding $52 million grant to the Port of Long Beach to boost on-dock rail capacity. They want to build up their rail capacity, improve the ability to use the existing rail, and expand that ability to move cargo off the terminal. Uh, it comes as well as Monday's announcement that California's proposed state budget, which includes $2.3 billion for ports. I should also mention that a little further down here, he goes on, his speech touted on the partnership between DOT and the state of California announced in the fall that will fast track financing over $5 billion for infrastructure projects. Yeah, $5 billion on top of everything else is being allocated to the ports as a loan. And this is going to help improve their output. And this story goes on, it talks about, again, the $52 million commitment that was made to Long Beach the $17 billion being committed to ports, we know 2.25 billion of that have just been allocated through port grants. We see a similar story here on American Shipper with freight waves, Buddha just vows to fight container rate inflation, which is a really interesting story because I'm not sure how he's going to fight that inflation. He has a quote here, there's no question that when you have a scarcity of access to shipping, you're going to see upward pressure on prices. And that's going to be part of our challenge when it comes to inflation, Buttigieg told a gathering of port officials and lawmakers at the Port of Long Beach. When there's actual wrongdoing, there will be vigorous enforcement. That is something that anytime the administration sees it, the president has directed there be action. And that's true on anything from evidence of gas price gouging to anything affecting goods. Now, that's great, but the entity that does that is the Federal Maritime Commission. A commission by its, its charter is not influenced by the administration. They're completely separate. Five commissioners elected or appointed and confirmed for five-year terms, staggered every year. They can't be fired by the administration. The administration can't tell them what to do. And oh, by the way, the Federal Maritime Commission is very limited in their enforcement abilities since the Shipping Act of 1984 and the Ocean Reform Act of 1998 basically took everything away that they could to enforce exactly what the secretary is talking about. Now, the new Ocean Reform Act aims to rectify this partially, but I should mention doesn't fund a enhanced Federal Maritime Commission staffing to do this. And oh, by the way, the Senate has yet to approve this and it doesn't look like they will. They're talking about submitting an entirely different bill. It goes on here, one of the reasons why Christmas was not in fact canceled is that ports like LA and Long Beach move record levels of goods, allowing an all-time record high in terms of re retail sales this holiday season, according to Secretary Buttigieg. Considering the pressures this country and these communities have been under, that is an extraordinary achievement. Buttigieg pointed out that the port complex processed 14% more container volume in 2021 than the previous record and that the nation's consumers 
received almost 99% of packages on time or with minimal delays. Now, I have to say that that statement in and itself is a problem. We have been talking, I have a video that talks about doing your Christmas shopping early in May. Talking about it in May, do your Christmas shopping early. A lot of people have been warning about this. And while Walmart and the big box stores, Amazon, Target, Costco, Home Depot have been able to get around a lot of the shipping problems, smaller firms have not. I mean, I went out, I looked in stores, the stores were not packed like they normally were. And the question is how many people didn't get what they needed? And oh, by the way, what about what are they missing now? And then you come to this story here. And, and let me say, this is the story I really wanna break down. This is a Lorianne LaRocco story, just came out on Freight Waves. Viewpoint, purse springs, ugh, purse strings are frayed and US trade is held hostage. Port of LA's Soroka, Gene Soroka. Quote, we're underutilizing opportunities to move containers off our docks. So I, I wanna break down the story because this story is the heart of the matter here. And so this story uses a series of graphs. I'm gonna show you these graphs and I'm gonna take myself off, off here so you can see these graphs and get a better feel for this. So Lorianne's story here deals with a couple of metrics that are really important. So for example, this first metric here is an average of what's called gate appointments by terminals. So to get a container off a terminal, a truck driver, a drayage driver has to make an appointment. They schedule an appointment to come in and pick up their cargo, which usually means they're coming into the terminal with an empty container on the back of their chassis. That empty container will be taken off and they'll pick up a new container. And you'll see here since October 9th of 2021, the average appointments are only being met 44% of the time. And then they break them up through the six major terminals that are there on LA. And to quote Gene Soroka from this article, we're underutilizing opportunities to move containers off our docks. We dug into our data and unused truck appointments have jumped from 30% in the summer to 55%. Chassis are tied up on the streets for 11 days. The dwell time for import containers in the terminals is six days. Meanwhile, rail providers have 40% excess capacity now. We need to do much better using our rail assets. And so you can kind of get from that statement there from Gene that the focus here is on trucks and moving it. And if you look at that statement with no context at all, you would think, well, Sally, obvious issue there is truck drivers. They're missing 56% of the appointments, but those appointments are narrow windows. And if a truck driver is waiting on a line that's backed up from LA to Alameda, they can't get in or their container that they have their certificate to pick up isn't available. In other words, they can't get at it in the stacks, then that appointment's gonna go as not met. And so to focus here on truck drivers, I think is a little disingenuous. So this next chart I think is really telling. And it talks about, again, who's blaming who for what. Uh, it goes on in the story that Lorianne did, this port blame game is prohibiting the advancement in the movement of trade. The vessel congestion and its impact on safety and air quality in San Pedro Bay have led to new queuing measures that have lengthened the timeline of transit. So this from Freitos goes back all the way to October of 2019, up until December of 2021. And what it shows is the amount of time it is taking to move cargo from China to the US, basically to offload. How long does it take to move that box from China to offload? This is the transit times. You'll see back in November of 2019, it was taking just 41 days. 41 days to load it onto a container ship, sail it across the Pacific, usually about two to three weeks, depending on the, on the voyage time, to offload it. And now you're at a record high of 80 days, 80 days. That's 50% longer than it was in December of 2020. Again, go back to December of 2020, you're looking at about 53 days and 85% longer than it was in 2019. 
And this shows that the ports are just being unproductive here in being able to move the containers and offload the vessels. This has to do with scheduling of vessels. This has to do with the fact that there are ships jumping in to offload in these terminals. And, you know, Port of LA and Long Beach are landlords. They don't control the terminals. They don't control the terminals. However, they do control the pilots. And one of the things that really needs to be done here is some traffic control. I mean, you literally have ships piling in here and throwing these schedules off. And terminals want the business. They want to offload a vessel. That makes money for them because if they can offload a vessel, load a vessel, that's money. But you have vessels that are jumping in. He keeps touting that you know these new lines are jumping into the trade. Well, these new lines are displacing existing lines that have scheduled service. And now there's more people waiting on the line, more ships waiting on the line to offload. Let's look at the next chart. So this next chart talks about freight rates. The Asia to West Coast rate is 169% higher than the same time last year. Asia U.S. East Coast prices climbed 6% to 17,476 per 40 foot equivalent union, unit and are 190% higher than rates for this week last year. So again, we're seeing these rates climb. Now, this index here from China to North American West Coast, the Freitos, again, this is not looking, this is looking at a combination of spot rates, those you get at the last minute to long-term rates. Long-term rates typically are lower, but right now long-term rates are at a pretty high premium and people are really charging a lot to get that. The next chart looks at container time for ships in the port of LA. And one of the things you see here is how long ships are sitting there. What's the median time in days that vessels are in the port of LA? And you can see here, they're in here for quite a long period of time. So, and this goes back to a larger issue that's mentioned in the story by Lorianne. The two land, land stakeholders in particular, the terminals and the chassis operators. The terminals are the ones that operate the cranes. They lease the land from the Port of LA and Long Beach. And the chassis operators have agreements with the ocean carriers on everything from the amount of container free times importers can have at the port, as well as the restrictions on chassis and empty containers. Understand what that means is there's agreements between the terminals and the shippers that in the past had never been an issue. We never talked about this, but you were allowed free time. You were allowed to offload your container and it could sit at the terminal for a set period of time. And the ports advertise this. Hey, you can leave your stuff on the dock for six to nine days without a problem. You don't have to warehouse it. You don't have to store it. That was to entice them to come use the ports. Well, now that's coming to kind of bite them in the back because now they got to get this stuff off, but those agreements are still in place. It's one of the reasons why you don't see the container dwell fee, which has been extended now 10 times, being enacted prior to six days because there, that dwell time is built into a lot of the agreements. Let's go to the next chart. This next chart is really interesting and this is the pool of container chassis. Uh, that, that exists. And, and one of the things that you see here is how long container chassis are sitting in the terminal or out on the street. And red indicates over seven days. And nearly that's all the 20 footers are in red. The 40 and 45 footers are in yellow three to four days, either in the terminal or out on the streets. And Lorianne writes, while the entrance of small container vessels calling the port of LA has decreased the amount of TEUs being processed at the port, it has not helped the port carve out efficiency. Chassis are cemented down outside of the port. Based on the dwell time of chassis at terminals and on the street, chassis are in container purgatory. Wow, Cavi kudos to that statement right there. It's a, it's a great one. But it's also confirmed by several other sources as I'll show you right here. Okay, this is one of my favorite things that I've seen written in a long time. This is from the PMSA, the Pacific Maritime uh, uh, Shippers Association. This is their December 2021 <laughs> newsletter, their West Coast Trade Report. And I got to say, whoever writes this, just 
hats off, man. I just I want to applaud whoever the the, the man or woman is that wrote this because it hits right to the uh, the core. I just want to read this one section right here for you. Perhaps the most intriguing takeaway in Exhibit One. Exhibit One is this first chart here, and I'll have this in the show notes, which shows the uh, difference here in loaded TEUs and the fact that LA and Long Beach and all of the ports in San Pedro Bay are down almost 10% from last year in uh, inbound loaded containers. This uh, report goes on to say this, that Exhibit 1, despite attention, the national media has been lavishing on the huge number of ships lingering in the ports of LA and Long Beach. The two ports have actually handled 81,659 fewer inbound loaded TEUs in November than they had a year ago at 9.6% fall off. Of course, last fall was an exceptionally busy period for, at the ports as imports swelled to fill the nation's fulfillment centers. Still, we wonder, this is the line right here, still we wonder how much the out-of-town press obliged to report such a seemingly ironic result will hew to the official explanation offered by the Port of LA that, and this is from Gene Soroka's official statement he gave at the monthly report on November's numbers, quote, Half of the 86 container vessels that arrived in November had a capacity of less than 5,300 TEUs, and smaller vessels can take nearly as long to process as larger ones. Let me be clear. I talked to a lot of reporters about that statement right there, and none of them bought that that's the reason that the Port of LA slowed down. Yes, we're dealing with smaller ships, and that is what's slowing us down. No, and then this line. Left unsaid by the port was how many of the smaller vessels that turned up in November were sweeper ships sent to collect empties. They were literally sending vessels in to sweep up, to clean up the port. That's where the business was going. The reason containers were down were not because smaller vessels were coming in, but the smaller vessels were coming in, weren't coming in loaded with containers. They were coming in to sweep out these empties. Why? Because they want to get the empties, not off the terminals. That's, that is what they want to do. But they want to get those terminals back, those empty containers back to Asia and load them as fast as they can. Just a reminder, we just flew 3747s loaded with potatoes to Japan because McDonald's wasn't getting their shipment of potatoes because the port of Vancouver had been closed. There had been a backup. And obviously going through the port of Seattle, Tacoma, Oakland, or LA and Long Beach with container loads of potatoes wasn't going to happen because the priority is empty containers. Let's go to our next slide. Okay, reading Lorianne's story, every time we got to the next chart was just another for me, just, just, just spiking of the ball on this story. The latest effort by the Port of LA to free up land capacity is the threat of charging ocean carriers a fee on long dwelling empty containers. Some improvements being recorded, but again, the port is still at 100% capacity. This chart shows you the empty containers back on November 15th. That's these empty boxes. And again, we're looking at the terminals and offshore and, and, and other sites where they store containers. So these empty boxes here, these hollow boxes are how many containers were being held back in November 15th versus the current amount shown there on January 10th. And in some cases at the APM terminal, at, at ETS, at FMS, you don't see much improvement. You do see an improvement at the WCT terminal. You're down almost 40%, but you see growth. Growth at the YTI terminal, for example, is up. Uh, tray pack is, is, is down a bit. But again, what you're seeing here is, according to Lorianne LaRocco, this is her quote, what we are seeing here is the equivalent of trying to dig a hole in quicksand. The container volume coming is in is wiping out any gains in container moving out. They get a quote here from the Pacific Maritime uh, Association. Uh, they tell them, quote, the historic supply chain congestion is highlighting the vital role that the West, Co West Coast ports play in America's economy and reinforcing the importance of every link in our supply chain, warehouses, trucks, trains, truck chassis, and other vital equi equipment in addition to marine terminals. Each of these elements must operate efficiently and in concert with a sufficient workforce in order to bring relief to the congestion that is slowing goods moving across the country. So what does this lack of product productivity mean for the supply chain? And Lorianne states it, and I've talked about this 
multiple time, if you cannot move goods efficiently, if you sit there as the head of the port of LA or Long Beach and you want to blame truckers, that's great. But what this translates to you, the viewing public, is inflation. Things are going to be more expensive. Why are they more expensive? Delays. You're paying fees. You're paying uh, storage charges. And you're increasing the time it takes to move. If it takes 80 days to go from China to the United States, whereas before it took 40, you're talking about additional fuel for vessels. You're talking about all these things that are being added. And what this translates to is additional cost. And all of this is in the next charts that Lorianne includes here, which includes a, uh, uh, a breakdown by Project 44 on average cargo value. So if, the, if your average cargo value is about $40,000 per 20 foot equivalent unit, shippers found themselves paying $106 per TEU per month against a 3.2% cost of financing above and beyond what was normally being done. And if you look at this chart right here, and I'll actually make this chart a little bigger for you so you can see it a little better right here. What you're seeing is the number of TEUs at anchor. This goes all the way up to November of 2021. You're looking at nearly 856,000 TEUs at anchor. And the additional interest that's being paid on that is in the range of $46 million in November, peaked up at 50 million back in October. And that's what you're seeing right now. If you look at the value of this cargo, this is the value of the cargo. Again, we're looking at TUs and anchor. If you're looking at the value sitting off the coast back in November was nearly $34 billion worth of cargo. There is, you know, if you order something from Amazon, you pay for it right then, but until you receive it, you've given money to that company. You don't have anything in return. You're losing out on that use of that product. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's what this delay is doing. Go on here to dwell times. You're, this is that Los Angeles uh, dwell time, the export dwell time versus the import dwell time that you're seeing here for January of 2022. We are expecting to see the onus of the import dwell time, that's only supposed to be in effect till January 30th. Then it goes away. Uh, they would have to renew it at the port of LA and Long Beach, but January 30th in the port of LA, not Long Beach, is supposed to be the import dwell time takes off. So we're not exactly sure we're going to see that happen. So what does this mean? Well, I think Lorianne Larocco in this story, building on what happened with the visit of Secretary Buttigieg to LA and Long Beach, indicates while everything seems great according to Secretary Pete, and you know Christmas was saved according to Eric Garcetti, the mayor of LA, and he identified Pete Buttigieg as the man who saved Christmas. I think when you start looking at the data, there's still a lot of issues out here. There's still massive amount of dwell time. There's massive amount of log jams. In the port, we're about to get the end of the year reports for the port of LA and Long Beach. And when you start looking at those end of the year numbers, you're gonna to have to be very careful about what you look at with those end of the year numbers. You know, here's the end of the year numbers for the port of LA. We're still missing December. We don't have it yet. But when you look at the port of LA, where was their productivity really up? It was up early in the year. March, they were 113% over the previous year's March. March is usually a quiet month, yet it was the second most productive month in the port of LA last year. The most productive was May. Over a million containers moved. But when you get down after June, one of the things you see is in July and August and September and October and November, percentages either are very low versus last year or actually down, down 8% in October, down nearly 9% in November. If you look at the port of Long Beach's numbers, they don't have that delta there, but one of the things they show you, and Port of Long Beach is a little bit weird to look at because they opened the LBCT terminal, so their numbers are up based on that. But you know, year to date, you can see right here versus the year to date change, their loaded inbound containers are up 17.6%. Their empty outbound are down 32%. They are up overall 18.3%. And again, this is the productivity of the LBCT terminal. That one new terminal is really 
you know, throwing off the numbers. Long Beach is going to be a competitive port, definitely against LA. So going forward, I got to be careful about what we saw right here. You know, they want to tell you that all is well in the port of LA and Long Beach and with the supply chain. Go back to the Secretary of Commerce sitting there saying, hey, we've met 50% of our metrics. Now you have Secretary Buttigieg in LA and Long Beach talking about we saved Christmas. 99%, 99%, just 1%. So if you didn't get your Christmas present, you didn't get what you ordered, you're that 1%. I think there's more, there's a lot of people in that 1%. I don't think that's exactly a fair number to look at. So hope you found this interesting. If you did, please subscribe. Hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, please contribute to my Patreon page. That allows me to put these videos together, to take the time to break down this, this data. And be sure uh, to follow Lorianne Larocco on LinkedIn and FreightWaves. She is a contributor to them. She's a contributor to CNBC. Same thing with G Captain, Mike Schuller with that story. Be sure to follow those sources. You can get direct information directly from them. I take the time to break it down if in case you can't follow those charts and understand them, that's what I do with these videos. So please subscribe and follow all those people. I think they do a fantastic job and they're bringing the news to you about the supply chain. Until next time, Sal, signing off.